I wanted to ask the town selectman administrator, whomever, what I can do with the next step to advance um, group four safety. It was a 37-page um, report I sent to you all. I don't know if you had already gotten it. That was done on behalf of the state, really, but as a freebie. Uh, UNH student has this capstone project. But it was done, you know, Bill, Bill Lambert was the sponsor. So um, this report has options for improvement of safety. And so in my mind, the next step, if, if uh, the town is interested in pursuing it, is for someone to go to Stratford Regional Planning Commission and, and represent this um, and try to initiate the process for starting a project that eventually gets put in there you know, their capital plan. So I've been reading through the Stratford County, you know, how they do their business and all, but it sounds like there's already a representative from the town that's supposed to be on that. And that's Jessica. Me. Okay. Okay. So my question for you all is, is what can I do to either help advance <coughs> the cause personally or um, can you inform me how we would go about doing that as a town, if the town supported such a move, but... I have a clarification, because it's a state road. It it's is a state, state road. road. So we don't have, I mean, we have a recommendation, but we, we wouldn't have any way of telling them what to do and how to do it, right? No. The state has to make that decision. But, well, the state, and with the recommendation of Stratford Regional Planning, mm -hmm. will prioritize projects. They would certainly... You, you can ask for things to get on the list, and you can advocate okay. for projects. Okay. But they will do what they will do. Okay. But that's exactly that role I'm either asking you to play or, or me as your representative to play because it, and if you think, so, so that's a big role. In reading everything they do, and I haven't really talked to them much, it sounds like that's really important. The, the community input is, mm -hmm. is a lot of how they mm -hmm. prioritize, um, you know, they, they don't just come up with projects on their own. Towns come to them and with, with either a well-built project or a need. Um, and they, they are then they represent that project to the state. But we already do have a bit of a leg up in the fact that I've been beating Mr. Lambert over the head for five years now. I mean, he's fully aware. When this thing, if it in any form showed up or, or any of these options showed up as an item on Stratford Region, you know, on their list, or as a potential capital improvement product project, and it actually got to the to the prioritization stage or the you know the funding stage. I mean, as long as Bill's still there, he can't say he hasn't heard about it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And he, I think he's an advocate too. Yeah. It's just that they don't take on projects directly, as we learn from dealing with them. You know, <coughs> we, you're right, Denise. We can't tell the state what to do. Right. Um, and, 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 and begging doesn't really help much. This is the vehicle that they described. It. We knew that. We knew that. And so that would be my recommendation. Like, are yeah. you at all interested in holding a seat or stepping in? Yeah, I guess, special regional plan? If, you know, I guess I'd have to look a little closer at that. I mean, personally, I have the time and the interest, but I'd have to, I'd be kidding myself and them to say that I wasn't, you know, a, a one horse, uh, you know. Everyone has an agenda. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, it would seem disingenuous for a guy to get on the board pushing the one thing. Not at all. You know. Um, well, you still have the support. Well, there would be a board member as well as a resident. So okay. We just, I mean, it's something to think about. No, okay? I absolutely. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm excited enough about this project to, to, to do whatever it takes. I mean, it's good. Oh, we'll give him some time to think. Well, he said good. we should nominate you tonight. <laughs> Again, as long as Jessica, Jessica. I'm not usurping the existing uh, no, uh, representation, she, she would still, we and, have two and seats. as long as two the seats. folks up there don't say, you can't have folks coming in here with their pet project in their back pocket, it is an agenda. Clearly, um, it is. Um, might I get in there and find out that it's exciting work and I want to do it for the next 10 years and work on every project in Trevor County? Probably not. <laughs> you already wrote me into a few other things that, uh, <laughs> that I'm not sure I can do. Yeah. No, I'm just passionate about this one intersection, to tell you the truth. You can also go to a few meetings and decide that it isn't, yeah. isn't so, really So go ahead thing. and nominate yeah. me, and I will be more than happy to. Uh, I don't
company you're selected for the member. All right, I, I will nominate Herb Ueda uh, to the Stratford Regional Planning Commission. Thank you. Seconded. All right, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so you have a seat, and Jessica will also be holding a seat as well. So okay. if you... I'll engage with them and figure out their case yeah. meetings yeah. and what the requirements are. Um, and if they will need paperwork from us to confirm that decision. So by all means, um, call them and let them know and, and like that. But um, they're not going to take any official recognition until they get paperwork. But with okay. that motion, it doesn't have to wait until the next meeting. Well, we can move that along. Okay. So I'll come by later this week and get some of the evidence. Okay. okay. And um, if we find out that it's just too much, certainly let us know. But I think that one person who's done so much of the research is you, and it would be great to have you aboard. It doesn't take a lot of research. All you have to do is try to cross that. Well, <laughs> so I, I know. I hear you. I hear we it. all research it every day for 30 it. seconds of terror. You know? <laughs> but um, I guess the only other concern I have, have is, is how would you... Uh, no, actually, you, you emailed that to the board. I did. I did. Okay. Then I can pages. send them on. Yeah. Um, so, you know, frankly, I mean, he's a college student, right? So he explored everything from soups to nuts. And some of the options in here, are, they're not viable. They're, I mean, he's, he's just studying it. He's not, some of them are just, they're not viable. Mm -hmm. But there's a couple that I think are, actually, mm -hmm. um, albeit expensive, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, I guess the only other concern I have is, is I, I don't want to uh, uh, propose or, or suppose that I represent the whole town in this matter. I don't know how much more deliberating you all want to do or how much more public input you need. We've had several meetings in this room where folks came in, not a big crowd, but the ones who came in were pretty vocal. Um, that, you know, but if, but, but if chief of police or fire department sentiment is such that this is a non-starter and that, that, that the town doesn't, at least in spirit, support it, you know, it'd be nice to know. I don't want to go bang my head against the wall if, um, if the town, but I, you I think know. anybody who drives on that road should understand the importance of at least trying to do something to help. Okay. Um, so I, I, I'm in support of yeah. I mean, options. I, I haven't had a chance to read that report, yeah. um, but I'm sure there's an option in there that's workable in some mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the only other yes. negative I can think of is you? I don't think any of these things would ever the cost the town a penny. This is what but you never know. Bear, right? You never well, know. You never know. But um, they'll always have the opportunity to sign on the dotted line when the time comes. Right. So that's true because every time they propose a change, they get our input, right? Just like they did when they got Right. Highway, so, so I wouldn't worry about that. I think they'll evaluate that. take its that course, time. and then if the public decided no, they don't want, let's say, a stoplight, mm -hmm. you can get plenty of input at that time. Mm -hmm. That's probably years from now. So right. It, it, it's not going to be immediate. So right. I guess. You know, my piece of advice about that is to continue to report back to okay. the board and for Jessica to mm -hmm. report to back to the board about the progress on the project and, you know, so that we can know that in five years we should expect to be, <coughs> going to be on the hook for whatever percentage of a what cost project, yeah. for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things like that would be good. Probably. Whatever, or at least, you know. We may find out that it's, there's no chance in hell this thing even makes the list, you know. Well, I, I got pulled over right away when I started living here. I live on Route 4, excuse me. And I, well, I was driving down and someone was stopped in front of me. I was driving down Route 4 and I went around them, probably scaring someone trying to go across the Bear Road. <coughs> and I was pulled over and they said, you know that's legal? And I said, no it's not. And they were like, yes it is. And I was like, oh, okay, so now I stop. And every single time I stop because someone in front of me is stopped to turn or if I'm turning, Everyone always passes me on the right. So I've asked the chief, like, that's crazy. And he said yeah. he's put up signs and all sorts of things, and nothing gets people to stop. Yeah. So I mean, has, something has to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the next meeting is uh, February 27th at 3.45 p.m. Yeah, I saw that. Um, the Rochester City Hall, right? Oh, is it? Okay, yeah. the email I just said said uh, they didn't know the location. Yeah. Oh, they did. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the, the organization is based out of the Rochester. Well, that's no, not the city hall, but they they have a community Huge. center. That's um, the complex, yeah. Right, that's right. next, to, behind right. the high school, yep. where they have a bunch of humans. Oh, that's right. It's a yeah, new so old, not the city old, hall. new, new okay. old high school. Yes. That's right, you're right. Yes. <coughs> so I'll be there. 
Me too. Well, cool. thank, well, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for stepping out. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Five more than I thought it would, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, consent calendar. Everyone okay with what's on the consent calendar? Yes. All right. By consensus. Um, building inspector John Jarrett by sense. Come on down.
you going to take a copy I'm of these gonna, before you give them? I, um, I'm going to gonna, I'm gonna take well. everything and, okay. and scan them and get signatures and payment, and then he'll have access to them once they're okay. signed. All right. So this, all right, so. Awesome. This is what he brought when he came and saw us last. Yeah. So this is to get his yeah. uh, dealer registration. Right. Okay. The renewal of his law. The new renewal of his dealer license. Okay. So all moves that we authorized means to sign the dealer registration. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 So do I put his name? I certify that. I put Mario's name or Papa. Mara. Mara. His name there. Doing business as Dave Auto. That's what I fill in here. Dave Auto Sound, yes. Okay. to make sure that you had, you know, that he could answer any questions you might have about junk car and selling. So I thought it would be better if you present the licenses. I agree. And it's nice to see you. Nice so. to see you as well. <laughs> so yeah, um, usually you'll have questions on the road, so I'm sure we'll be talking. Sure. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, good night. Good night. Thank, Thank you. For all the hard work on that, too. Oh, sure. <laughs> see ya. Good job. situation. Uh, we got a two-way last week. It has all of the new equipment installed in it. I'll show you go. With the exception of two things. We need to install the graphics on the car. Here we have the graphics. We bought them last year. We just have to have them installed on the car and have the anti-theft device uh, put in it sometime in the next two months. Uh, but to start with, I do have a purchase order here to have the new graphics installed on the cruiser. Uh, it's purchase number 1893 for two-way communications uh, for $300. What is the graphic? What, what is the graphic? The graphics, the striping. Oh, the striping. <coughs> oh, they do that? Two-way does it? They do that. Oh, okay. They install. They don't make them, but they install them. Can I do all of them at once? No. Well, mm -hmm. this is one different. Yeah. Purchase order number 1893 for two-way communications, uh, two two-way communications, for graphics on the new cruiser in the amount of $300. Second that. All right. Any further discussion? Negative. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 By going with a different vendor this year, we actually saved four hundred dollars over the cost of the graphic. Okay, we did receive.
received the annual alarm monitoring invoice from Pro Technologies. Uh, that's $239.49. Uh, last week we had the call uh, Pro Technologies to come in because the software for the security system didn't work in the new computers because we upgraded, so they had to install new software. That was $266.45. And while they were here, we actually had to fix the camera in the uh, lobby of the hall up here because it got, it got knocked to the side uh, during the painting process. Uh, so when we walked in Washington Monitor, it was like this. <laughs> so they fixed that. Okay. And um, during the week, week, uh, weekend, when the power went off a couple times in the building here, it did something to the water sensor, so that's been activated all weekend long, so we have to come and repair that. So I'm estimating $275 for that. Uh, so I have a grand total of $780.85 to Pro Technologies with purchase order number 1891, and that will come out of the town hall maintenance fund. I'll move purchase order 1891 to Pro Technologies for a total of seven $780.85. So they charge to reset the water sensor? Well, they're going to charge to, it's a service call. Oh, okay. So they're going to charge to, 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 they Oh, sorry. No, but I... Sorry. I don't want Patrick's help. Oh, right. Lastly, uh, last fall, we talked about purchasing the, the seven computers uh, to replace all the, the networking downstairs. Uh, there must have been a communication uh, breakdown between myself and our IT person. He actually would have for us to replace. He also replaced the... Uh, that is solely dedicated to the internet. Uh, that computer there was actually a hand me down from the prior networking system that we had. So that computer was even, even older than what we, what we get rid of uh, at the setup. Um, so I did receive an additional uh, bill for that. And that's uh, purse number 1892 Pro Vantage for the sum of 572.92. And that will come out of my equipment fund. Okay. system got hacked last week. Um, apparently somebody got in and uh, initially when you called our dispatch line that rings here and dispatch, they were getting a uh, <coughs> uh, travel agency somewhere. And I guess a number of calls were made on the 2724 line to the Caribbean. So uh, the town administrator made me aware of it uh, Friday morning and she took care of first light with a phone line issue, I called Accutel to see if they come and install some software to prevent that from happening in the future. Mm -hmm. And they did. They actually did today. They installed the software so folks from outside should not be able to get into our phone system in the future. Um, we're not the only one, apparently. This has been happening uh, to a number of uh, locations and agencies and whatnot. Uh, somehow they're getting into the phone system and all of a sudden they're, they're charging overseas calls. <laughs> Is it just the police so, department? <coughs> it was just, just that line. It was just, it was just our line. Oh, okay. uh, but now that we have the software, um, it, should, it should protect the entire system, including your lines up here. Okay, good. So if you have any phones up here that do not have a uh, access code to get into them, we should enter them for voicemail. Okay? So mm -hmm. the line
one that they get into was, was the, our 301 number, which is for the uh, reception desk. Okay. We don't use that phone to receive uh, uh, voicemails. Yeah. However, I don't know if <coughs> somehow when they, they sign in, they can see which ones they have passwords. And I don't know how it works, but, uh, but that's, that's the one that they get into somehow. So. <laughs> it's probably just blunt for us, and they try, sure. try them all. So I first number 1807, made out to Accutel. And I'm estimating repairs to the phone system today for $250, and I'll come out of town home with this. I'll move purchase order 1807 to Accutel for $250 for repair to the phone system. Second. Um, is that a, uh, every year uh, fee? No. Or is it, it's just this a stock market? This is a one-time, one one yes. Okay. Right. Any other questions? We're not in anticipating a high estimate, but I'm going to make sure there's so Okay. So, were, are we exposed financially from the from the hack, no. or just the calls for the prison? Just the calls for the prison. And, I don't know and, and it, it's not clear whether or not they're going to. I, I believe they'll rebate them back to us, but I don't have clarification on that. Yeah. Does it even cost money to make long distance calls or anything? I, I don't know. It does. It, does. Well, it depends well, on your phone, know, especially with yeah. business lines as opposed yeah. to personal. Mm. It's like seven dollars a minute or whatever.
live on the. Uh, you know, it, it, it'll save. You know, it's, like he said, it, it, we can't do all your maintenance. Okay, we're talking about the basics. He says, but yeah. you know, for once, you know, we always had the oil change and stuff in Greece, and they go right through the trucks right before the winter. Mm -hmm. He said, once or twice a year, he says we don't have a problem. We can take the truck in and go through. They go out. The state relies on them for bus inspections. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to have a better look at, you know, our vehicles probably. I mean, don't be busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is for $350.17 for the road service and repair with replace the rim. I'll move purchase order 1787 to sell a tire uh, for $350.17 for a uh, tire repair. Okay. All right, so you do have to can let us know going forward where, where it's coming from. So with vehicle maintenance. Vehicle maintenance? Yes. Yes, you need to log, log it on there. What account? Yeah, so we, going account. forward, we need to do that. All right. Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Further discussion? Okay. 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. be working on the voters guide addendum to let people know what happened at the deliberative session for the majority of people who weren't there on Saturday. Um, recap the meeting and let them know what they're voting on. on <coughs> well, the overly exemption changed. So, um, yeah. um, but otherwise to let them know minimally that things haven't changed. We can educate them on other things mm -hmm. more than we did on the voter guide if you want. So you all can be thinking about that if you have thoughts about how that should be. Did we do that last year? I don't remember. We did. Okay. I don't remember. How much does it cost to do it? Like um, it's about I think two forty or two fifty or something for printing. Yeah, I think two twenty. Yeah. Some something about oh. that for printing and another oh, oh, printing, yeah. for printing and then another yeah. approximately two hundred dollars for the every door direct. So we don't have to do. So we could save in printing costs by making it not as large because it doesn't need to be as large right. for the addendum. Yeah. Um, but then it needs to be on cardstock, which is more expensive mm -hmm. um, to meet postal regulations. Mm -hmm. So the other thing we can do is see if. Like we can just do kind of a large postcard, and what are the sizes? Um, what's the size limitation mm -hmm. on that kind of thing? And just do a, a you know, a single-sided something. Mm -hmm. um, but just to remind people of the voting date and try yeah. to encourage people to come out to vote. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you have in the budget, right? Yeah. It's yes. It, it, yes. It's we budget for this. For the whole yes. Thing. Okay. Then. Yeah. 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 Okay. Just as you were planning. Yeah. Okay. All right. Tax bills. Okay. So um, we have been mailing out tax bills through a tax service for the past couple of rounds. We've been doing that with existing supplies. Um, in other words, typically when we were doing tax bills in house, we'd have to order tax bill forms with Avatar, and we'd have to order envelopes to put the tax bills in. And the... Be careful when you leave, it's that night up. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, Mailways, who has been sending out the tax bills more recently, has been doing so with existing supplies that we have supplied. They will do it for the same price while printing on plain paper. I'm not sure about the envelopes. 
but they will print on plain paper, which means, so we, we're, at, we're at a point now where um, we can spend $175 to purchase tax bills, tax bill forms from Avatar. And I think that's one year's worth of tax bills. It may be more. Um, if we go with the mailways company and, and send tax bills through them, then we don't need to spend one hundred seventy-five dollars on the forms because they'll print on plain paper. So <coughs> we wanted to revisit this conversation after the last tax bill round went out before the next tax bill season. So it's just a good opportunity because they Avatar needs us to order those bills pretty soon if we want those forms from Avatar. So you don't have to make a decision about that tonight, but you need to make a decision soon. Um, or at, rather, Avatar needs to know pretty soon if we need to order tax bill forms through them. So it would save $175 above and beyond? Minimally. There's still, you know, um, you save a little bit on postage. So. It's something like sixty dollars more expensive. I think we decided um, once you know they, they get less they they get a discount on postage. So there's a slight discount on postage plus there's a labor fee. So I think it's slightly more expensive than if we do it in house. But doing it in house, um, it occupies a <coughs> people's time. We need to find volunteers. This you know now that we're buying supplies, it's a savings of one hundred and seventy five dollars. But I don't know over how. I would say it's minimally a year. Okay. So in-house meaning we use our printer. Right, and paper. our ink and our Which manpower is. to make it happen. Okay, but um, and how are they going to get to the location in which they need to get? They apparently pick them up. In fact, they'll pick up the newsletters. Okay. So we didn't realize that was the case. Is but paid for that? No. Okay. So they do a lot of tax bills, a lot of communities, and they do other communities in our area. Mm -hmm. And so there isn't really a fee okay. for, that, right. for that. I know it was an issue because it, Mike used it was to do an it. Issue. it, it so was I want to make sure that it we're not going to say yes to this and then have an issue getting them there. So, right. Okay. All right. What do you think? Save $175. Yeah. I think it makes sense. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, election coverage. So is anybody planning on being there tomorrow? Yeah, I, um, I meant to send an email and I'm sorry, my job is crazy. Um, I can be there like 7 to, um, it'll probably be like 12. In a.m.? Yeah. Okay, that's good. And then obviously. I thought we had, oh, I thought that when we were talking about election coverage, it was for the town election. For the primary so election. supposed to be at all. They're yeah. supposed to be, yeah, board coverage for all the elections. So I put in for some afternoon time off. So oh, I will okay. be there in the afternoon. And then I'm going to go back and be there. Are you going to go back and be there at night, too, to oh, help? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you're just talking we to have to, we yeah. have to be there. Yeah. Okay. So when are you going to get there, then? I'm, I'm probably going to be there like between maybe 1, one to 4, go home for lunch, and then I'll come out at dinner, and then I'll come back and do the rest of it and be there for town. Okay. So Is it okay if someone's not there from 12 to 1? Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. yeah. Yes, and Suzanne had offered, uh, and we checked with um, Charlie. And that is okay, but you are supposed to have at least somebody all the time. Yeah. So I would say if you think you need coverage from 12 to 1, mm -hmm. um, delegate to that, that to Suzanne or somebody mm -hmm. who's willing to do that so that you have some kind of official coverage all the time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so and then I'll be there at 4. At 4? Yeah. And then you'll be in the same as well? Yeah. Okay, so that works. I could probably even come earlier. Say you're going to do seven to noon? Uh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I can probably stay. So I could, I could probably be there by 12 30. Okay, four. I can stay until 12 30. Okay. Yeah. I mean, do we want to deputize Suzanne just in case? Oh, absolutely. No, no uh, yeah. yeah. Did you talk to her about that already? Because um, Charlie's okay. Um, so she's willing to. She just needs to know if you want her to and for what hour, what time. So right, why don't you, just to say it's safe, because I think I didn't ask for it until somebody told me one thirty. So why don't you see if you can come in like 1130 to, to, to 1 or something? Right. Um, yeah. And, and then that gives you a little time. Yeah. You need to leave a little. I have a conference And you want to come in until yeah. 4? Yeah. Okay. And then you'll be there until the end. Yes. Okay. So I think <coughs> you'll be there some part of, to the end. Um, sure. Yep. So, okay, that sounds good. Great. Thank you. <laughs> it probably 
to deputize. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll, I'll move that we deputize um, Suzanne Huard as our representative at the election in the case that we one of us can't be there. Okay. Great. All right. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. And that would be for all elections going forward. I would assume that we're talking about as long as the three of you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. okay. Very good. All right. Um, social media training. So Primex offers. Um, online training. It's for a half an hour. You do have to sign in individually, and I, I, it reminds me that I didn't get a response back about everybody getting their own username and login, but I would expect that that isn't a problem. So um, I know that there have been concerns among the board and, and you know, what is appropriate social media use for employees and elected officials. And so it's an opportunity, and it's free if you want to do it. And if you, you know, you all are welcome to do it. Um, you can mandate that employees do it. Um, we need to pay people for whatever time that they're using mm -hmm. for any kind of training. Um, and then they would get a certificate that we can put in their personnel file to show that they. But they're all going to have to have a computer, so they're probably going to have to be doing it at home. At home. At home or at the library or here yeah. okay. or, you know. But it's yeah. okay to do it at home, right? It is okay because okay. You, you, you'll get your username and password mm -hmm. and you'll get your certificate and you can bring your certificate in to show that you did it. And if the time of someone getting paid would, would be just their half an hour at home the, doing. Yeah, the program. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, I think at a minimum it's a Heads, but I, yep. I, I don't think it can hurt to have everyone spend half an hour to do it. Yeah. Or at least <laughs> ones who run their department websites on social media. You know, yeah. I, I know that. <coughs> you know, um, yeah, that's, that's a good point because not everyone is posting on behalf of right. their department. But I think fire and police have someone other than the chief is doing it, um, I think. Now, you're just talking about the department, not versus the other blogs or websites that are on social media. So. Well, people that are like people that are private, you can't do anything to yeah. people that are private. But like rec committee, like yeah. since they have one, so, you yeah. know, whoever it is that manages that page Can at least should do it. it. Yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Um. So. Let's just be clear. You're, are you mandating this for those department heads or other officials, for all officials who manage or own or interact with an official town Facebook page? Is that is that what we're saying? I just want to be clear what I'm telling department heads about what they or their employees. And what their recourse if you don't do it. Well, so mandating is a little different. I mean, you, you can mandate things to to employees. You can't <coughs> mandate things to elected officials and committee appointees. So, so you can, you know, strongly recommend or, you know. I just want to make sure that because police and fire might be associations and not in the official police and fire websites. So that, well, that, that, they that say fire. <coughs> you know, they say that there's a fire right. department one and there's a police department yep. one. So, yeah. you know, somebody who's an employee is managing. I don't know who is doing it, but I know that the association ones, they're, they're, they might be something different. Yeah. Well, but, so, so we can't have any part in what right. the associations do. Okay. But this one says official, Rollins Retirement okay. Department. But it is, you know, it will teach them good practices that one would, oh, hope not, it would that carry on. To <coughs> it's recourse if you mandate it and they don't do it. That's my, that's my question. That's all. Well, um, employees, you know, employees who report to you, I would say, you know, you can always. There's some kind of enforcement action over, you, you know, you want something to happen and they don't do it. Yeah, you would hold the paycheck. I mean, I today I was doing an anti-sexual harassment training at work. If you don't do it eventually, they're going to say. You have to do the training. Like that's the requirement of working here. You got to do the training. So, be it. Period. <laughs> the elected officials is, is harder. Um, you know, the committee appointees. You know, I think we'll be compliant. And and I would just I think we do 
would have passed. I think we will yeah. be without having the word mandate in there. I think that they were strongly encouraged. And yeah. if yeah. we don't yes. see these certificates coming into the office, then we will talk to the department heads to have them highly encourage the departments who are speaking on behalf of the, their organization take it. But I mean, it's it 30 is, minutes. You know what I mean? I don't. Yeah. I don't either, but, it, but yeah. what if it isn't, well, what if they don't do it? And yeah. then it's um, like, if you say mandate, take, take there's take nothing we really can. <laughs> so, um, then I don't know. Take away their access. I don't so, what are the that. things that's. I don't that's think it's, it's the, they're the ones who created it, not well, us. Well, 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 though, if it is the, you know, official, you know, official fire department, you know, the fire chief's elected, mm -hmm. I'm not sure there's a whole lot you can do with that. Mm -hmm. Official department or official yeah. highway department, <coughs> those are entities of the town, and you could tell that's them they true. have to shut it down. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, okay. I just want to bring to your attention that they will discuss in the training best practices, which will be helpful for them, but really first among best practices is having a policy. So mm -hmm. a policy really ought to follow mm -hmm. so that everybody understands that now based on what we learned in the training, mm -hmm. this is our policy about how you will run your Facebook Each pages. department or the Board of Selectmen do a policy that they all must follow? Yes. Okay. A town policy. Town policy. Okay. All right. So. An issue have someone sign for it. That they can yes. Right. So I have a sample one I will, um, I will okay. give you. Okay. Yeah. And, right. and send to you. I, yes. I, I have a long time ago, but I'll, I'll resend it. Okay. All right, so you'll follow up with us on um, either how we sign up to do it with our username and password or what, however. Yes, I need to. Um, I yeah, I need to follow up with Climax about how to get the usernames for individuals because mm -hmm. right now I'm the only one with a username, so all right. I don't know how that works. But okay. yes, I'll find out and then I'll send an email to all the department heads and yeah. copy the board so you can see that. Okay, very good. And give them a timeline too. I would say we try to at least give them a timeline and see and tell them that we want their copies yeah. of their certificates to put in their files. You know. Um, okay. Yeah. Any comments or questions? No. No. no? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, so the non-public that's taken care of, right? Yeah. That's okay. fine. Um, policy review. Um, so you all had a number of um, comments about the purchasing policy last time we discussed it. So I made some edits based on those comments, and I emailed you all revisions. Sorry. Mostly, it's um, it, you all were working from an old version the last time, and um, I know you had seen some edits that weren't reflected in the paper copy you were looking at. So, not all of this is new from what you've seen. Um, the amounts have changed for the thresholds. Um, section eight. Um, the bottom of section eight was based on a comment you all had made that you will have the, you know, you'll consider having the town attorney review mm -hmm. um, RFPs. Um, emergency procurement, um, I remember nobody liked that word, practicable. <laughs> <laughs> so I put in an alternative for you to consider. Like that one. <laughs> um, blanket purchase orders, um, you all discussed having the first one not be more than 75% mm -hmm. of the budget line, mm -hmm. and then you all can approve subsequent ones mm -hmm. if necessary. Um, I added, in section 16, I added that red paragraph, which is what we discussed about having the town administrator approve 
all of the regular bills that the select board currently approves. Yeah. So I was thinking about this after. Like, this is a purchasing policy, not a bill approval policy. Not that this isn't valuable to have in here, but it's like. It may not be the right place to put it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wouldn't. I don't think I would remember it. <coughs> it's just like we're, we're mixing up as an mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We little. can also rename the policy. Yeah, like to something. financial guidance. I don't know. Um, yeah. Purchasing and processing, you know. Yep. Like, yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah, we can think purchasing about that. Purchasing and financial payment processes. Financial payment processes, you know. Yeah. Um, but I think it is a good, you know, a good opportunity to document that process. Yep. If it, since it's not otherwise documented. But I take Agreed. your point because you're right. It's, I, you know. Suggest is that you look at it in the non-strike through like final yeah. version yeah. Yeah. and and see it as in its okay. readable version and see what you think of that. The next, the and next then the next meeting to have it approved it unless it right and then yeah. you can also you know email me copies uh, comments if you want me to incorporate a change mm -hmm. and then I can present to the board um, if there's a if there's a change I can present mm -hmm. a, a different copy for you. <coughs> in the purchasing policy um, about an ethics policy. Well, didn't you say once approved or something? Once approved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just so that yeah, it fine. references something, even if it doesn't exist, that once it does exist, you don't have to then revise purchasing yep. to say, yep. read your ethics. Yep, because definitely. it's really important that finance reflect ethics mm -hmm. um, once you have ethics. Mm -hmm. That's your biggest liability, yep. I would say. All right, so um, giving us the opportunity to review your changes and stuff, and we'll put it on. So we'll put the purchasing policy and the credit card policy on the next round to get that. Yes. And they can find something for the ethics committee. And I'll send, yeah, and I'll send the um, social media along, um, just as a reminder that I sent it. Before we move on to other things, mm -hmm. um, Miles took a draft, um, he took a stab at the CIP. So I didn't know if you all wanted to um, review that, because this is the last meeting for items to um, be approved by the board for inclusion in the, in the town report. So
So if you had um, comments, changes, or none, even better, then we can... Did, what did you change? I don't remember, to be okay. honest, because I did this quite a while ago. Okay. Um, basically, because we're not buying the articulated Of this 2021, mm -hmm. so that should be yeah going over there, right? Um, the 2021. Assuming yeah, because we should do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so this this green box will move over to next. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, I did that. So I think the major changes were um, allocating. Placements where we hadn't allocated money mm -hmm. before um, because the generator wasn't as much as we thought, mm -hmm. it only 30, not 60. Mm -hmm. um, that was the major. And I'm, I'm not sure that the version you had originally had that yeah. um, alloc total allocation, so you probably dispersed 2020 allocation to different projects, I'm thinking. Yeah. Basically, tried to <coughs> keep the yearly amount, that's, you know, yeah, yeah. stable. Yeah, it looks like it is, so that's um, good. Of course, this will change the three. Yeah. Any second. <laughs> yeah. The minute that someone comes with a yeah. new priority. So, so, it, so what is our intent to keep the articulator motor on there? Well, or was I think it to get rid to, of it or think, to do something different? Yep. I think that's a conversation. A lot of uh, uh, I'm personally not in favor of it. Well, I wasn't either. Um, so if we're deciding to take it off to deprioritize it, then we need to redistribute this that mm -hmm. money. Which I can do, but we won't have a chance to approve. Yet. Maybe put maybe put it out to <coughs> kind of relook at this yep. and just leave the money because I mean it's something that may have to happen in the next couple of years. You don't lose your placement, right? So to say, but I'm thinking something a little less expensive yep. um, that could do the same type of a job and let him do the research and come back to us on it. When he came to us with the articulated, with the used one, how much was that? 50. Uh, 55. 55, I thought it was. I just think that. 55 is a Yeah, I don't think it's for it. And I'm not sure that what is. Yeah, I'm not sure that. They must have another part of the city. But I that wasn't. Hmm. That's why well, I got caught in it. Uh, didn't he say he could use it for. So it'll do a lot of the things that the skid steer mm -hmm. can do, so that the skid steer can be dedicated to the transfer mm -hmm. station, which is less work for the skid steer mm -hmm. and will help to extend its life. Mm -hmm. So I believe this vehicle would help with snow removal the way the skid steer does mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. And then it would also have the sander on the back so mm -hmm. that the sidewalks are getting sanded. Mm -hmm. So apparently there are... Um, 11 different series and 26 configurations and over 170 attachments for this multi-one yeah, loader. So yeah. you can, this will cost money. Yeah, but it's, it's based, I think the one that you presented was one for snow removal that had that attachment. So it can probably, whatever you want it to you be. You buy, spend another five <coughs> different, like a bucket attachment or blah, blah, blah. I see some of those go by where we are for every time we have snow. So I mean, I, I, if it's what that is, I mean, yeah, it's a little thing, but I'm not sure that it's, it's the money. So, yeah. would you like me to give him that feedback and ask him to find something that's I think similar for less money? A little less money. And not necessarily used, it's not, you know, but what what can we do for sidewalks that um, isn't going to be an $85,000 piece of equipment? Or has he been talking about the sidewalks <coughs> Like, because we rent a backhoe whenever we need one, right? Yeah, we, we have a backhoe, but we did um, 
what the rent an excavator. So excavator. If, if he's thinking maybe we could get an excavator and imagine for this for cheap and he's thinking so, it could be used something else, then that would be, you know, it's not just a sidewalk yeah, machine. Yeah, during the CIP process, he, he's kind of rethinking all of the equipment. Um, so selling the backhoe and getting a, um, an excavator. Skid um, loader. Yeah, so I think we need a lot more clarity in mm. that plan. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what does that cost us? Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the backhoe, I think, I don't know, the price is in here, but it was like $80,000 or something. This, so that still has a lot of value if we're going to trade in on something. Mm -hmm. But we need to see it in, in black and white, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. like a whole, whole plan. Yeah. Um, One of the things that I'm just kind of curious about is is how renovating sidewalks and redoing sidewalks might make the existing machine work better on new right, sidewalks. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know what how much that may or may not be true. Yeah. I just think it, it needs more conversation before we take something off and to find out if there is something that is less. <coughs> This way, but in the yeah. meantime, I'm going to talk to George about doing some research to get ready for another conversation. Yeah, you. but you know, just yeah. because it's a lot of money and you know, just to pay for a sidewalk and thing, you know. I, yep. I, That's yeah. a tough sell, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. So I had a question mark on the 1991. I didn't know if that, that fire engine was actually from 1991. That's um, that's not a fire engine. That's a um, oh, what? Where are you? Uh, line. Yeah. I thought you said Freightliner. Oh, no, sorry. No, Fire Engine oh, 1991 right. replacement. Okay. So that must be the 1991 I, one. I, I just, I had a yeah. question mark there because I didn't know if that was the actual year of that truck. Um, Which one might be the 1991? It's probably the, the oldest. Yeah. It's probably it the is. white one. Yeah. The oldest white one. Probably. So if I could just find the year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other question mark. an existing piece of equipment that he was talking about not replacing right. if you're going to get this articulating loader instead. So that's kind of part of the trade-off is that if you, you know, you can completely redesign what the equipment stock would be for the highway department, yep. but as things are now, if you're not going to get an articulating loader, right. then, then you must plan to buy a skid steer at some point right. soon. Again, or, or something. only whoever sits in these three seats at the time yeah. you're going to have all this history in there. And <coughs> you know, both. It's, you know, I mean, well, and, right, and the right. position, 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 you know, this is a planning tool at this point that, and he may say, if I get this, I don't need this any longer. But in two years, that might change. Well, and the fact whatever. that it's still there is a bit of a question, you know, mm -hmm. what is the plan? Mm -hmm. So, um, so again, we'll publish it. Just I think as we can it publish it as is. Yes. I mean, yeah. Um, okay. And, and like I say, it's kind of just your name and put it on the <coughs> information you get. So. Okay. Thank you, Lana. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Budget committee. Budget committee. I know, but for the sewer and water. Yes. The budget committee. That's amazing. Um, those are some of the sources. I don't think they were. Yeah. No, 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 because we're meeting Wednesday. Um, mm -hmm. I can't remember what it is. No. no. But anyway, there's, there's nothing on the calendar for Thursday. For Thursday. Okay. Maybe it's close enough. I'm not having this whole calendar this whole week. <laughs> but anyway, so that's what I have. Um, last week 
I attended the, um, the meeting with area communities about the stormwater permit. Um, this wasn't the regular stormwater coalition meeting, but it was the meeting with um, city and town managers um, and their engineers about their reaction to the permit, um, the new nitrogen, specifically the nitrogen mm -hmm. permit. So um, the upshot of that meeting is that the communities are going to, Rochester and Dover have both done a lot of research into the science, and the science doesn't make sense. The, they are capping our nitrogen loads into the river um, at a certain number of pounds per day. They're doing this to all the communities at whatever, whatever the level is, 100 um, pounds per, I don't know. 12. Well, for us it's 12. Yeah. For other communities it's more. But like so 300 or something. The, the point time. is though that they're capping it. And capping it means that you, you have to reach the levels, you, you have to get your nitrogen down to the levels that they're approving. But then what happens when there's development and there's more sewage? That would up your levels, but you can't up your levels. So it really stops development and really stops development. But it also doesn't seem achievable because it requires doing something with non-source point um, stormwater, which means, yeah, Communities have done their research and have found that approximately 10 or 12 percent of the available land mass in their communities is um, public right of way of some sort or another. In other words, they can only control a very small part of the land. Um, so the state is essentially requiring that the municipalities get onto to private land, <coughs> you know, do things to private septic systems in order to meet these nitrogen levels. But the state law doesn't allow for that, and also for banning pesticides, um, and rather fertilizers. But um, that's also not something that um, local communities can do. <coughs> the state has to take a bitter, bigger role in those ways, but it, they're also not um, asking the municipalities to do something that is legally within their purview to do. Um, and so there's general agreement and frustration about all of that with the communities. So the last go around of, um, of permitting was similar in that the science didn't seem to make sense. And Dover um, fought that science with the state and ultimately um, got the state to do a scientific peer review, which in the end supported the science and supported um, Dover's argument. And you know, life got better for that version of the permit. Here we are again, and the state is refusing to submit a peer review, submit the science to peer review, um, at the same time that the permit is in public comment period. So the first step is that there is a, um, a public hearing on February 19th, which I will attend at Pease. Um, and I would encourage the Water Sewer District to attend as well, because they are also subject to this, whether or not they know it yet and have been notified, um, to, to give feedback to the Department of Environmental Services and um, Region 1 of EPA about the, um, the science involved in the permit. That, that's step one. After that is, um, or separate from that is a public comment period with EPA specifically about um, the recommendations <coughs> about a lawsuit with regarding the, the permit and whether or not we agree with the changes to the permit that resulted from the lawsuit. Um, and then sta stage three of this is that um, we are going to try to get all of the governing bodies of all the different communities to sign similar letters urging the legislature to do what they can do about um, fertilizer and you know the parts of the this that, that aren't really <coughs> from you know the municipal standpoint, but but urging um, the Department of Environmental Services to submit to peer review. So unified, unified, consistent 
messaging throughout this process. Um, I can't say enough for how much we are benefiting from the engineers and consultants and time of the bigger communities around us who have done the work and done the science. Um, we would be lost without them. Um, what about other towns too? They are hiring consultants and they have people, they have people who are working on it. Um, so we would have to pay someone. To we would have to yeah. pay somebody. Yeah. To <coughs> this, we're also very unique in this situation in that um, with the exception of new fields, new fields might be like us, but we might otherwise be the only community that has a separate um, a, um, a a sewage facility that is not part of the town. And yet the permits are connected. Um, the permits are connected because if because your total nitrogen is capped. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing more from a wastewater standpoint, then you don't have to do as much from a stormwater standpoint. And if you're not doing enough as far as wastewater is going, then you have to do more, you know, as far as stormwater goes. So I do not understand yet the implications of that in this community where they are two different organizations. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned, mm -hmm. but um, it was a really great meeting. It was really great to see so many people in the same room um, approaching this together and sharing their data and research and time. Um, Can you be on the one hand? <coughs> So I will be at some point coming to you suggesting that you sign some kind of resolution asking the state and EPA to We do have welfare. Oh, well, actually, before we go into welfare, you have a number of things I think you're discovering. In yep. I have a request for disbursement for $3,000 to the um, public library. Um, so there are two items I will tell you um, that you are approving at the same time you have checks. And that's just because of the nature of what they are. And that's the first one. So if you don't okay. approve it, I would have you not sign the check. Okay. Or we can void the check. Okay. Um, so that's what So it's for collection development programming, library supplies, magazines, subscription, and museum passes. Um, and I, I would move that we sign this request for disbursement. Okay. All right. So this is just part of their budget line in the budget. Yes. And they're just asking for a disbursement it's out of that. Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. Any questions? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. So uh, the purchase order. to Jeanette Gagney, uh, $225 for deliberative session minutes. Mm -hmm. Second. All right. Any discussion on that? No. Yeah. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 That's just an estimated expense. It's almost time to notice people that we're about to clean their properties because they have unpaid um, bills. Okay. Um, people always come in at the last minute to pay them off. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to write a check for that because you never really know mm -hmm. how many there's going to be. There could be 12 today mm -hmm. and then five the day before. And then on the day you're ready to do it, it turns out to be three or something like that. So. Um, that's what we think at this point, but I'm asking that I have authorization to put it on my credit card for mm -hmm. up to that amount just mm -hmm. because
because it's really hard to get a check signed. Yeah. It has to be ready on that day. It has to go out on that day. Is this a certified? It's yes. It's certified, right? Yes. yes. Okay. All, right. <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Last purchase order, I'll move um, 1797 to Overhead Door Company for $720 for uh, replace two door receivers at the fire station. Okay, All right. Um, any discussion on that? No. Is this what he brought the cover with them? Was it going to get the date invoices attached? Yeah. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 So these are sheets of their totals by hour and also by day for the total number of um, vaca all the vacation and sick time for, um, that people have on the books as of the end of 2019 signed by their respective supervisors looking for a signature of the board. Um, this goes to the auditor because these are liabilities because if somebody should leave then that amount is payable to them. So there's a column for that, <coughs> and then a column for that amount of hours, which equal the number of days, um, for both PTO, which is vacation, and for sick time. Okay, so how many how many days are you allowed to carry over every year? There is no limit on the number of days, but they have to be used by the end of June of the following year. Whatever you carry over? Yes. Not sick, though, right? Sick, though, has a... <coughs> Just wondering, the cap shouldn't it um, for employees to sign off? Wouldn't it make sense for it to match like 60 days so that 
people who are doing FMLA can be paid for their time off. Something to consider among the board. Um, then, uh, for the addendum to the voters' guide, um, could you please look into um, the state line verifications? Portsmouth is having a problem with the sports booking not working at certain establishments because it's within 500 feet of the main state line. Um, and if you're at like the post office um, in Portsmouth, you cannot place a sports bet because you're too close to the main state line, which might affect our legion. They're not applying for it. Well, we don't know that they're not. I mean, they're not the ones who petitioned no, to have it on there. Oh, so once it gets approved, though, it, they can apply to the state for it, for it right. even though that they're not part of the petition article. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Once yeah. it's approved, well, it's it's approved, approved, once right? it's approved they might just yeah. find that it doesn't really so That would be work. their... It would just be, like, they're a consumer... There are about a thousand of you. Yeah. A consumer in Portsmouth reported it, and there was a whole big newspaper article they couldn't go into a bar and place a bet, even though the bar could have, because they were too close to the main state line. So it might bring additional revenue to the community, and it would be interesting to know if the Legion is affected by that ruling that it's too close to the state line or not. And I want to <coughs> thank you and ask that you continue to work diligently on your policy review because we're in the same process with the REC and we are re putting in our manuals and so forth. Please, re please review the town reports or the town social media um, policy. So it's good to have it on file because we're asking whoever the REC committee is hired, recommended, follow your policies. Anybody else? Hearing none, we'll move to the non-public for um, 